Chinese prices would actually fare after the spring festival for the year of 2014, the year of horse. And they saw that overall prices would see an uptick, but slower than the numbers that was pre reported previously. Lo and behold, data released today. And we also hit the streets in Beijing today to see what parents thought about this move. We asked them if they would be more inclined to purchase imported baby formula that was sold locally if prices came down. Some said yes but most said they would prefer to bring in the infant formula themselves or have it delivered by a friend. Mm. So clearly many here in the capital prefer imported brands and when it comes to... Stella Lee joins us now in the studio. Stella, how do economists interpret this new milestone for China? It now is number one in terms of goods trading nation. Well, James, I got to tell you now, the news is seen largely by most economists as symbolic, but not at all as a surprise to those we surveyed. In fact, in 2012, Chinese numbers for exports and imports lagged only $15 billion behind the U.S. And by the end of November last year, they already agreed that China was certain to be the biggest goods trading country based on very conservative December data prediction. Also important to note is that China's current trade surplus is at its highest since 2008, the year Beijing hosted the Olympic Games. So in Washington, I believe the Ch Chinese finance minister Lu Jiawei made the comment that a 6.5 growth is uh, not a problem at all. So it's evident that the government is trying to, at least for the direction in the longer term, on restructuring or making sure the employment targets, inflation targets, stay within reasonable limits. All right. Stella Lee joining us live from Beijing. Thank you. ...that remains largely off-limits to foreigners. Many businesses can only rely on external investing and organic growth. Stella Lee, CCTV News, Beijing.